हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू तो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट यूनिट नंबर यूनिट नंबर फोर एंड दैट दैट इज बेसिकली योर एनालिसिस ऑफ ट्रसेस सो इन ट्रस स्ट्रक्चर व्हाट वी हैव इज हियर इट इज कंपोज ऑफ वेरियस डिफरेंट मेंबर्स ओके एंड इट इज बीइंग जॉइन टुगेदर एट एट द एंड्स मींस एट द एंड्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ प्लेट्स कलर प्लेट्स सो एज यू कैन सी इन दिस फिगर हियर Uh, in this figure, this is the roof truss. Basically, it is called as the roof truss, and you have seen in the industrial areas and on in various uh, roof. I mean, uh, stations, so okay, railway station yard, and all the other things. Okay, so uh, here you have seen that. So this truss, these are the various different members. These are joined in a such a fashion. Okay, so they they can. Uh, just transfer the loads into the upcoming load from the roof to the column and uh, they are make they are made like this because uh, this means it, they are made to withstand very uh, means uh, you can say uh, uh, proper loading okay so the proper loading means the load will only come through the joints okay at here and at here okay and uh, the these are the various uh, this is the loads and these are the various members this, this is called as purlins the purlins will connect from one truss a truss to another truss and this is the roof and this is called as top cord this is called as bottom cord and you will and uh, see it, this is the gusset plate basically so these are the gusset plates and gusset plates are basically the steel plates and these members are joined together either it will be welded or it can be riveted okay or it can be bolted through uh, to the uh, gusset plates and they are all joined together at this point okay but in the analysis part what we do is we assume these gusset plate as a pin joint okay so whatever the load is coming onto the uh, truss that is basically uh, uh, transferred by the pin joint and and that pin joint is uh, uh, what it will do it will try to means it will uh, they, it has only two constraints okay means uh, it will it will allow the members to rotate and it won't allow the members to go in either directions or so, x and y directions okay so uh, the load is going to transfer uh, and the only the internal forces is going to be develop inside the member so there won't be any movement because at the end you are allowing it to rotate so that means that there is only axial force will be present in the inside the members over here okay so that you have to cal calculate either it can be tensile force or it can be compressive force so that we have to calculate by the method of equilibrium conditions okay so this is basically the roof truss this, these are the various types of roof truss tr truss we are, we are having here and uh, different designs are there based upon the need of the design you can choose them okay and this is the bridge basically so bridge also as you have seen uh, in many uh, means railway bridges are there that are made from truss bridge okay so this is this is that those are called uh, truss bridge because they you they are made up of truss structure okay so this is basically uh, the bridge system is there so two trusses are there this is one truss and this is one truss okay and uh, the these two trusses are connected with uh, lateral bracing this is lateral bracing is there and uh, these are the uh, strangers in stranger beam that we call it as on which the uh, load is going either it can be a means it can be a road uh, there or it can be a train track will be there okay so train will be running through the bridge or it can be a road okay that is basically called as deck so this is uh, called as bottom deck bottom cord and this is called as top cord members okay and these are the inclined members and these vertical members are called as uh, vertical struts okay and uh, these are uh, stringers and these are basically uh, you are connected uh, uh, connecting these are connecting the two trusses and these stringers are de means uh, designed in such a fashion that all the loads coming onto the stringer that will be transferred at the joint see here this is joint uh, in here okay so in uh, means uh, behind the means beneath the stringers this stringers is going to are going to transfer the load into the truss by the this uh, cross beam over here and these these are the various cross beams are there cross beams are there and it's like this this cross beam okay so when the load is coming it is going to transfer into the cross beam and that cross beam will transfer the load at that particular joint so remember this uh, in means 
and all the trusses the load is going to transfer at the joints only not in between because it will bend the member and it is not designed to do so so they will only will be uh, means th these members are designed for only compression either compression axial force or tensile axial force okay so compression axial force so basically it it, it is uh, you can say that uh, these are the ways uh, different types of the trusses and you can see these this is basically like a beam okay so if it is supported here and here and load is being applied inside the main truss or above the truss so it is basically behaving like a beam simply supported beam and these top members will act as a compression members okay so they will uh, means that this beam will be uh, going into sagging mode and the truss will sag and this top member um, top cord members will be in compression and this bottom cord members are, are in tension will be in tension and these vertical and inclined members can be or cannot be in means either it can be in tension or it can be compression okay so based upon the load values and the position of the load that you have to calculate okay so uh, we have two uh, basically methods we have method of sections that we call it as and method of joints so we use these two methods of the um, and to calculate the uh, various internal loadings in the truss so what are the internal loadings means internal forces in the uh, this uh, truss members okay these truss members so let's uh, move on to uh, this uh, our lecture notes and uh, see over here uh, so i have defined the truss what is truss and how we are going to analyze it and uh, the truss structure is basically commonly used in hangar roofs houses bridges okay and uh, uh, let's uh, go some uh, revise some basics over here so what are determinate structures determinate structures are those structures which can be solved by uh, by using equilibrium what you are solving you are solving the unknowns basically what are the unknowns external support reactions and internal forces that are going to develop inside it okay so uh, that is basically uh, defined by the indeterminacy in the structure so uh, what is the indeterminacy how will you find in truss structures you will find that or uh, means why this formula basically static indeterminacy is given by m plus r minus 2j and what is what is this basically m m is the number of members r is the number of support reaction action support reaction and number of members so these are the unknowns basically number of unknowns means each member will have uh, one unknown each member will have one axial force to calculate and these are the support external support reactions so this is these are, these are the number of unknowns and uh, how many equilibrium equation you can make per joint at one joint we can only make two equations sigma fx is equal to zero and sigma fy is equal to zero and uh, okay so at each joint we can make two equations so how many equation we can make we can make two into uh, j joint okay so this is m plus r these are the number of unknowns you have to find and these are the equation you have to find so number of unknowns and uh, number of equations should be similar that's why uh, means it should be similar otherwise it will be a indeterminate structure okay and uh, if it is coming to be zero this difference then, then the structure you would structure is determinate and you can solve by using equilibrium equation okay so that is it and uh, you can we can see also the stability part here that you can see here that static indeterminacy in the structure m plus r minus 2j should be zero and uh, for the uh, structure to be determinate if it is uh, less than one then it can it can be means uh, unstable or it is greater than one or greater than zero uh, it can it will be uh, indeterminate structure and you need uh, other equations mean compatibility equations to find the uh, means unknowns okay so stability in the structure you can see over here uh, means if your uh, uh, number of members unknowns are less than uh, the means total number of equation the structure will be unstable okay so you have to check here unstable means it cannot perform its purpose and it will fall down or collapse and if this uh, some m plus r is equal to either equal to uh, 2j or it a uh, or greater than 2j means it can be determined also to be unstable okay so there are some, some certain examples are over here that how a determinate structure can be unstable see this is the static indeterminacy is zero for this structure okay if you calculate it it is the static indeterminacy is zero but it still it is unstable why because of the configuration of the supports okay so unstable concurrent uh, concurrent reaction okay so these th these things you have to see 
so our structure should not be unstable and see all the all the reactions are in parallel so unstable due to parallel reactions so it can move in this direction so it is not stable in its position see here this is also a statically determinate structure in say si will be zero okay so it doesn't mean that if the si is zero, is zero that it, it will be stable uh, always be stable it can be it can be unstable so uh, based upon the configuration of the members and all things so you have to check all these things unstable due to collapsical mechanism you can see here what it do these joints are basically the pin joints so if you put a load over here what is going to do it is going to sway like this so it is not uh, it is not in, in intended uh, means uh, remaining in this position okay so these are the various things that you have to keep in mind uh, before na analysis okay so a structure should be stable and a structure should be determined to calculate analyze the truss or means a truss structure okay that you can apply equilibrium over there so what we do is what we do is see this uh, simple example is there uh, three members are joined together by three pins and it is uh, supported here means this is pin support and this is a roller support and this uh, horizontal force is acting on c joint okay so we have to calculate uh, this uh, means internal forces in members and first of all we have to calculate these external support reactions so always calculate external support reactions first apply equilibrium equation over here and you can calculate it sigma fx is equal to 0 rax will be minus 500 newton sigma fy is equal to 0 ray plus rby will be 0 okay because there is no vertical force over here and you have what you have to do you have to calculate a moment at a calculate rby so rby we have taken 500 newton and ray is calculated to be minus 500 newton so this means why, why it is coming my here because this means that our uh, assumption was wrong basically okay we have uh, assumed that it is positive upwards but it is not it, it is acting in downward direction okay so that's the thing so now uh, how will you calculate internal forces basically there are two methods method of joints and method of sections so in method of joints what we do is we isolate the joints and we see how the forces are acting on that joint due to these internal forces acting in the member so we isolate uh, this all the joints you can see over here the uh, abc joint i have uh, isolated and how the uh, it means uh, forces in the members are shown over here so first of all what we assume is that all the uh, means uh, uh, members are having tensile force okay so all the members will be stretching and in uh, in result what they were doing they are putting uh, tensile forces on the uh, joints okay you can see over here at c and b so this is basically how you show the tensile forces that are acting on the uh, member means this is um, on the member and uh, this will be going outwards and uh, will be uh, shown outwards and at the joint what is happening in the opposite direction will be happening over here fbc will be uh, going in this direction okay because uh, this is stretching so uh, what you can see over here is uh, all the things you have isolated here so first of all uh, at which uh, uh, su support you will take to isolate first you will go first you will analyze first because uh, that uh, what you have to see over here is uh, you have to see that which uh, sub means joint has which joint has uh, minimum number of uh, support okay oh, sorry minimum number of forces okay means unknowns minimum number of unknowns so this joint is having see at here we are having this uh, two unknowns fac and fab and here we are having uh, two unknowns fb fab and fbc okay and here we are also having two unknowns fac and fbc so you can uh, take either of the uh, means uh, either of the uh, of the three okay so you can take any of the three either a or b or c so i have to, uh, i have uh, taken c, joint c first okay so because uh, there are no a number of forces are less over here so uh, there is no uh, means uh, complexity over here so just uh, isolate this thing and resolve the component of this fbc so this will be 45 degrees so fbc cos theta fbc sin theta and there is also a force acting on here and this is fac will be vertical downward direction so just apply equilibrium equation on this joint only okay so this joint will be acting as a free body diagram or free body and all the forces are acting on here so just apply fx is equal to 0 fbc sin theta 
will be equal to uh, will be uh, sorry fbc sin theta plus 500 is equal to 0 so fbc sin theta this is coming to be this so you can directly calculate the value of fbc is equal to minus 500 under root 2 n so this is showing negative sign this means that our assumption was wrong and the force that is being developed inside the bc member is coming to be compressive okay so just uh, put, uh, put uh, minus sign and uh, put uh, means c or call a right compressive in the bracket so that you can remember and uh, just apply say sigma phi is equal to zero so you will get fac is equal to 500 newton from this equation okay from this joint only so this uh, this is how you can calculate the values in internal forces of internal forces in the members now what you have to do is yeah we we know fbc we know af fac and we uh, we have to calculate fab over here so just uh, you can t either you can take this uh, support or you can take this support just isolate it and apply equilibrium equation so sigma fx is equal to zero it will give you fab fab is in uh, this horizontal direction and uh, this will be uh, plus by minus fbc so fbc cost 45 degrees is equal to zero so fb fab will be 500 so you can see over this is in tension and okay and fac was also in tension and this is also in tension but this uh, this member was in compression so according to that we have to design these members okay to in compression how much force and stresses that, that they are going to carry inside the member okay so this is how you can calculate uh, uh, means internal forces in the trusses by using method of joints next is your method of method of sections okay why we use use that basically analysis of trusses by method of sections when we have more complex trusses okay and we need to calculate uh, means uh, uh, forces inside the truss okay so we don't have to go like for method of section each uh, each uh, for each joint you have to calculate or like uh, if we are going to use method of section we have to go uh, for a joint to if we have to isolate a joint first then we'll uh, calculate a, a b a g and then we'll go for this then we'll go for this joint we have to isolate all the joints to calculate the forces between um, uh, sorry forces in b c g c and g f so what uh, does a method of section uh, means it states that or if we cut a section like a beam like a simply supported beam that we have done uh, previously so cut a section over here and draw the fpd diagram over here okay so draw the fpd diagram and this will be left hand segment and this will be right hand segment and huh, before cutting the section what you have to do is you have to calculate support reactions okay so first step is to calculate support reaction for that you have to apply equilibrium equation on whole uh, truss okay so on on whole truss you have to apply equilibrium equation so i have applied that and we i have calculated the values of support reaction so dx uh, and uh, dy okay dx is equal to ex dy ex is minus uh, 3 by 2 kilonewton and dx is 3 by 2 kilonewton so uh, make sure that uh, two means first of all what you have to do is just assume all the reaction in positive direction okay so that that's why you can just uh, go for it and calculate if it is coming negative then it means that uh, the is value is means direction is coming to be in the wrong direction okay so either you can correct the direction or let it be and and put the values always where you want to put it with the negative sign so that's it basically so uh, now what you have to do is you have to calculate internal forces in bc gc and gf so what i have done over here is instead of going for method of joints uh, that will be a lengthy procedure for this so uh, what we'll do is we will just cut a section over here and isolate these two parts okay so either you can uh, choose these this uh, left hand segment or you can choose this right hand segment answer will be coming from uh, both uh, will be the same okay so what you have to do is just apply equilibrium equation in this fpd diagram and what i have done over here is uh, we i have applied equilibrium equation in this fpd diagram so fcg sin theta will be equal to one so this is the first equation fcg we can calculate then m um, what you have to do we have to calculate fpc so for uh, uh, one thing what we have to do is uh, we can just calculate uh, or summation of all the moments uh, due to all the forces at g okay so there will be a moment due to fbc about g and there will be moment due to this one kilonewton load about g and fcg and fgf will not be contributing any moment because this line of action will be passing at point g only so fbc will get directly uh, in this way will get directly fbc uh, from this equation 
and that's calculating the FBC. So you will see here, yeah, this is coming to be positive, this is coming to be positive. So FCG is also positive, this is in tensile, and FBC is also positive, so this is also tensile. See, why it is tensile? Because why top chord members are tensile? Because this particular truss is acting like a cantilever. And uh, what uh, you are getting over here is that uh, the top chord members will be in tension and the bottom chord members in the top in the compression and the uh, inclined and in, uh, this uh, means inclined members and vertical members either it can be compression or it can be in tension. So you have to check those. So uh, just applying equilibrium equation and uh, summation of fx is equal to zero. This will give you this equation and just calculate put all the known values to the here and we will calculate the value of unknown fg f is equal to minus two Clinton. This see this is in compression. So the uh, bottom chord member is coming in compression. So uh, based upon the behavior of the uh, truss, uh, it uh, the means forces will vary. Internal forces will vary. So this is the thing now and uh, just go through the examples book, uh, given in structural analysis by rc hibler and uh, uh, go through the uh, means uh, tutorial sheet also and uh, there are so many books are available indian author books are available just go through this and the method will be the same okay and uh, just uh, you have to uh, what you have to assume here is always assume that there is a tensile force is uh, developing inside the truss member okay and it is positive and show very accurately like uh, like i have shown over here that uh, how how to show the uh, free body diagram okay and how to uh, show uh, forces at the joint so just uh, take care of these things and uh, it means it will be very easy this is very easy procedure and uh, just you have to calculate all the forces in the members by using method of joints or either you can use uh, method of sections okay so uh, that's how it is and next is your this is basically your analysis of arches so what is arches basically what are arches arches are uh, basically the circular structures or you can say circular beam structures or you can say circular truss structures are also there that uh, what they do is they whatever the load is coming onto it, it, it they, they don't bend but uh, they what they do they effectively transfer the force whatever the load is there they effectively transfer the load in the sideways okay so there will be three types of uh, there are three types of arches that are most common basically fixed support arch that the support is fixed okay two hinge continuous arch the, at the end we have only pin support over here three hinge arch we have only we have three hinge okay so a one hinge one pin support is there one hinge pin support is there and there is one hinge also is there so you can see over here that that uh, means this is these two are basically indeterminate structures and but this three hinge arch is uh, determinate structure and can be calculated analyzed by using equilibrium equation you can see over here how many support direction it will have this this is the support and this is the support and uh, we have and uh, in hinge there there will be two reactions over here okay so three reactions so there sorry three supports so each will have only or two constraints so there will be six reaction and equations per member equation per member per member how you can calculate equation per member that at each member we have two equation okay uh, sorry in each uh, for each member we can have two, uh, three equations uh, means uh, sigma fx is equal to zero sigma y is equal to zero and mx means sorry sigma m is equal to zero so uh, there are two members over here so this is the formula for uh, trust basically okay trust or beam you can say uh, sorry trust sorry uh, arches this is this is the formula for structural indeterminacy r minus 3n this is used in arches okay and beams and for truss we use another formula for structural indeterminacy so r is your number of reaction at the supports okay or hinges you can say and uh, n is n are the number of members in the arches and uh, th that's why you can see over here it is coming to be zero that means it is determinate structure and you can calculate and analyze the structure by using uh equilibrium equations so first of all what you have to how to calculate uh, these support reactions okay so our first uh, analysis is that our first step will be to calculate support reactions over here what uh, we are going to do is we are going to split those these things and uh, th this part will be split in half and, uh, and in this segment 
segment and in this segment so first of all first step what you do is you just calculate the value of these internal hinge reactions okay cx and cy and uh, you can see over here is uh, whatever the uh, means uh, arrow you are showing over here action over here opposite action will be shown in this part okay either you take this positive positive in this and negative all the negative in this so i whatever you take the answer will be, it won't affect the answer okay and uh, uh, first of all you have to calculate just uh, draw a bd diagram for one single segment of this and calculate this cx cy okay how you can calculate it is basically very easy uh, you can calculate it by uh, using uh, two equations will be there uh, one can be calculated from one equation over here and one equation over here and uh, see uh, you just uh, calculate the uh, moment at this particular point just calculate the moment at this particular point and you can calculate the moment at this particular point and there will be two equation and two unknown then you can calculate this and after that just apply equilibrium equation in this particular part and sigma f is equal to zero sigma f is f is equal to zero will give you the value of ax and ay and uh, similarly bx and by let's uh, see one example over here okay <coughs> yes uh, this this example is there so there's uh, so many examples are there you can go and see in the book also and this is the example over here i will i will show you how to calculate it okay so there is one example uh, yes 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 so one example is uh, is there see uh, how it is there so this uh, arch is there three inch arch and uh, this is pin support but this is roller support so what will happen if there is uh, not a tie over there then what will happen it will go sway away so there will be a horizontal uh, reaction over here in and vertical reaction over here and uh, these are the various loads that are coming on to it and uh, you have to calculate uh, reactions in the support and in the tie also okay and uh, in the tie member this is the tie member that is calling because it is tying this member to this member that is not going to allow this uh, uh, member to sway away and uh, this because this is a roller support so you have to provide tie member otherwise if it is uh, if, if it were uh, pin support then uh, then there is no need to uh, give tie member over here okay so that's the thing so all the means measurements are given over here so what you have to do is you just isolate this thing okay just isolate this thing and uh, first of all what you have to do is apply uh, means you have to calculate equilibrium equation over here equilibrium equation over here uh, and uh, apply equilibrium equation on this whole arch and you can calculate the value of ax ay and cy so sigma fx is equal to zero there is no horizontal force is acting on the member um, sorry on the arch external load basically so there is no uh, is there so ax will be zero sigma fy is equal to zero will give you ay plus cy is equal to 25 kilo newton okay this ay plus cy is equal to 10 plus 15 so this is 25 then what you have to do or uh, just take a um, uh, means calculate moment or summation of the moment about a and you will th that uh, that's how you, you can you can directly get the value of cy over here so there will be moment due to cy about this point there will be moment due to 10 kN load about this point and there will be moment due to 15 kN load about this point okay so just uh, summing all the moments uh, clock and clockwise you are taking that positive and uh, clockwise is negative you just putting to zero and you're getting the value of cy and ay okay now now what you have to do is you have to calculate the value of uh, uh, you have to uh, calculate the value of uh, bx by and uh, and the tie means there will be tension in the member so you have to so i have separated this uh, segment ab and or draw the free body diagram so there will be uh, two reactions over here due to this hinge and there will be a one force in the tie this is tensile force and these are the support reactions what you have to do first just calculate the value of t by calculating uh, summation of all the moments about b point b point okay that uh, that's how you can just uh, uh, means ignore these values not ignoring because there is no moment that will be developing due to bx and by so uh, you can calculate uh, t is equal to 4.32 km and uh, for calculating bx and by just apply equilibrium equation okay and uh, you can uh, means just apply equilibrium equation over here 
बी एक्स इज इक्वल टू सेम ए एक्स हो जाएगा सो दिस दिस विल बी कन जीरो सॉरी बी एक्स इज इक्वल टू दिस टी ओके एंड ए वाई विल बी इक्वल टू बी वाई एंड इट विल बी नेगेटिव ओके वॉट एवर इट इज जस्ट कैलकुलेटेड सो दिस हाउ यू कैन कैलकुलेट द रिएक्शन ओवर हेयर इन द मेम्बर and uh, also you can calculate uh, uh, means normal uh, forces and uh, shear forces at any particular point in the arch also just isolate that particular thing and uh, where you are cutting the section just isolate the thing and just you are ca you can calculate like uh, that you have calculated in beam uh, beams okay simply supported beams so just uh, go through the examples over here and uh, if there is uh, any problem is there just you can ask me on whatsapp to or uh, classroom okay and uh, i have also uh, given you the solution manual so you can use that also solution manual or uh, just uh, but but try to do it yourself first okay and uh, this is very simple basically just you have to take care of the sign convention and support how many support reactions are there and uh, how the moments are being calculated and how to apply equation how to draw free body diagram okay so uh, that's what it is basically so it is very simple just go through this and uh, uh, let's hope that uh, all things will be clear and uh, uh, let me know if you need anything else okay So thank you